Hey everyone, Mr. Ray here. I want to do another optimization video for you. If you haven't seen the first one, you might want to take a look at that. It's a little bit of a simpler problem involving a fence post. This one involves a cylinder and is a very classic problem again, but it's a little bit more advanced than the other one. So if this is your first round through, you might want to take a look at the other video. I'll put a link in the description. Otherwise, stay with me right here. So here we're going to look at determining the cylinder with the largest volume that can be inscribed in a cone with a certain height and a certain radius. So the first thing you have to get out of the way is kind of the picture of this thing. Now, if you're relatively comfortable drawing in 3D, which you really should be, it's very helpful. You know, a cone is pretty simple to draw, something like that. And then we're going to put inscribed into this cone a cylinder. So, you know, maybe that'll look something like this. And what we're looking for is the one that's going to have the maximum volume, right? So as we change this height of the cylinder, it'll get wider or shorter, and we'll have a different volume, right? We're looking to maximize this volume in here. One thing you can do to help yourself with the drawing is collapse this down by one dimension, right? So it's not necessarily going to be the same problem, but you can think about this in terms of looking at it directly from the side, right? This is a perspective. We're kind of looking from above. If you think about bringing your eye level down to the level of this cone, then the cone becomes a triangle from the side, and the cylinder becomes a rectangle. So that might help you to get a handle on the different, uh, you know, things going on here in terms of the variables and the perspective. I also want to impose an XY coordinate plane. I'm just going to go ahead and make this the origin. That way that I can easily define my variables and it'll work in terms of the symmetry here, right? So if we think about the Y axis coming straight down the middle, let this be the X axis, then we can define everything pretty easily. So what are the variables we have to control for here? We've got to pay attention to the R, which is the radius of this cylinder, right? I want to pay attention to R. But I also need to pay attention to the height of the cylinder. I'll call that H. And, you know, that'll be the same in each drawing. H here, height. H here, height. I guess I'll go over here. Just put a little H, right? Now, how do I know that I need the radius and the height? Well, the volume of a cone, excuse me, of a cylinder is pi times the cylinder's radius squared times the height of the cylinder. So in order for me to calculate this volume, I'm going to need the radius. I'm going to need the height. Now that's two variables, and this comes up very often in these optimization problems. We have a, a function that we're looking to optimize with more than one variable. We need to get that down to one variable before we can do anything. So we've got to figure out how the radius and the height are related to each other. Well, in this case, that's a pretty simple relationship. Um, since my cone has a height of 8, that means that this up here is 8 on the y-axis, or the height axis, if you will, and it has a radius of 4. That makes that this is 4 on the x-axis, or the radius axis, if you will. So this is actually just a linear equation. Right? It's pretty simple to figure out. It's just y equals 8 minus 2r. Right? Or excuse me, I shouldn't say y equals. I should say h equals, since this is height and radius. All right, so the height is equal to 8 minus 2r. It's simply a linear equation. Something else that you can do, sometimes students find it easier to see this way, is you can think about similar triangles. All right? So when I put the cone in here, there's actually two similar triangles. This is, the, this is the cone in here. Well, then we know that this entire height is 8. And we know that this entire width is 4. Right? So in this large triangle, we've got 8 by 4. But then we can also think about just h, the height of my cylinder, which is right there. And just the radius of the cylinder is right there, which makes this part here 4 minus the radius. And we can set up a proportion. These are similar triangles. We could say 8 over 4 equals h over 4 minus r. Right? That's coming from 8 over 4 equals h, this height, over 4 minus r. And then, you know, 8 over 4 is just 2, so this is 2 equals h over 4 minus r, which means 8 is, uh, if we cross multiply here, 8 minus 2r. And aha, that is exactly the same thing as we had there. So it doesn't matter which way you set this up, uh, whatever is more comfortable for you. What's important is that you have to figure out the relationship between those two variables so that you can eliminate one from the first equation. So I'm just going to tuck that over there so it's out of the way and have a little bit more room. So back to my original formula here. Volume of the cone, uh, of the cylinder rather, is pi r squared h. But h is restricted, right? h has to follow this relationship in this problem. So I can replace the h with that. I get a formula for my volume of pi r squared times h, which is 8 minus 2r. 
Now we can, of course, clean this up a little bit, and we get the volume equal to, let's see, 8 pi r squared minus 2 pi r cubed. Now, the good thing is that this is, again, a nice polynomial function, so it's going to be really easy to work with. We're looking for, of course, the derivative of the volume of our cylinder, and so this is just straight up power rule again. We have, let's see, 16 pi r minus 6 pi r squared. We can factor a little bit out of this. So let's see, we can pull out a pi and an r and at least a 2, it looks like. So let's go ahead and pull out a 2 pi r. And then we'll get 8. And that'll give us 16 minus 3 r. And if we go ahead and set that equal to 0, then we'll get two critical points, right? We get a critical point at r equals 0, which that's not really sensible, right? Because if the radius is 0, you have nothing going on there, so we don't have to worry about that one. We also get a critical point at r equals 8 thirds. So intuition should tell us that of the two, this is going to be the point we're looking for. But again, let's keep good habits and let's write down the prime line, think about the analysis of the function, and establish that it is in fact a relative max. So we've got 0 and 8 thirds. This derivative is a quadratic again. It has a negative leading coefficient, which means it would open down, right? So if I were to graph this parabola, it's going to look something like this. That tells me that the sign of the derivative is negative up to 0, is positive from 0 to 8 thirds, and is negative from uh, 8 thirds onward. So that tells me that this function, the original function, the volume function, is decreasing, then increasing, then decreasing. And that squares with our intuition because, of course, this tells us that we have a relative max point right here, maximum point here. So that's the point that we're looking for, the point where the radius is equal to 8 thirds. I believe that, let's see, what are these answers? Determine the cylinder with the largest volume. So the radius is 8 thirds. We should figure out what the height is as well. We get that by simply plugging into there. So if the radius is 8 thirds, the height is 8 minus 2 times 8 thirds. Right, which would be 8 minus 16 thirds. 8 is 24 thirds, so that gives us a height of 24 minus 16 thirds, or simply 8 thirds again. Aha, right? 16 up to 24, yeah, that's going to be 8 thirds. So we've got a radius equal to the height, which is equal to, in this case, 8 thirds. Uh, we have centimeters as our units in this case, so we'll go ahead and put centimeters down there. You always want to pay attention to units. They are important. So this is the problem. And again, it follows the same essential process as all of these optimization problems. You need to figure out what the function you're looking to optimize is. In this case, that's this volume function. If you have more than one variable, you need to come up with some way to relate those variables so that you can replace one of them. Once you get a function you can work with, you go ahead and take the derivative, find the critical points, look for the one you want, which in this case was a max, but it could have been a min if we're trying to minimize cost or something like that and that'll give you your, your, uh, your answer. You might have to plug it back in to find one of the other variables depending on the way they phrased the question. And I've also got a little animation here for you on this one. So here you can see our cone, right, has a height of 8, radius of 4, and inside of our cone is a cylinder. And clearly some of these cylinders are going to be less efficient than others. Like this is a real tall skinny cylinder, it's not going to do us very much good. We could also have a really short fat cylinder, not going to do us much good. Somewhere in the middle is going to be the cylinder that we're looking for, right? And you see that little animation run there. We figured out that the best radius was, oh, I forgot now, was it two-thirds? Let me back and look. Oh, it was eight-thirds. So let's see, so that's about six and two-thirds. Well, it's exactly two and two-thirds. So let's go ahead and stop the counter, counter there. Let's see, that's uh, one radius, radius of about two. And somewhere right about here is going to be our maximum volume. Right, that's a radius of about two and two thirds, or eight thirds, and that's going to maximize the volume for this particular situation. So, hope you enjoyed this video. You found it helpful. If you did, please like, comment, and subscribe below. And if you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment or shoot me an email. If you're not in my class, if you're in class, just ask me tomorrow. Have a great day.